So Steph, we, I mean, we've gone out this afternoon to locate one of the groups of giraffe that we released yesterday. Um, and Julian got a GPS location exactly. of, of them. Um, so we got some locations. They went quite far into a valley over there. Obviously, they from the release site, they started running a bit. Um, and we see that quite often. They go exploring. They don't know where they are. They don't know what's happening. Um, so they went into a valley there and then they returned and we got a quick sighting of them on the road, three of them. Um, and then they got wind of us, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much legged it um, along this valley. And we can't see them here now, but we see the road where we were standing and yep. saw they were running around here. Um, but now we can't see them. So they probably ran into the wind, into the sun and disappeared around the mountain. Here. So yeah, they're just exploring the area and, and that's really normal behavior we see normally um, where we have used the trackers after a translocation, we see a lot of initial movement yep. and just really exploring the area before they settle down somewhere. And what we also often see is that the groups, even if they were um, released a couple of days apart, yep. they eventually find each other and hang out together. We obviously will try and get a proper visual of them. What are the things that we, we're going to be looking for when we find them? Um, are we going to just to make sure that they're eating? And... Yeah, we just want to check that they're that they're all right, that they seem to move all right, that they're eating. But I mean, you also can't expect them to be settled in. I mean, we just yeah. took them and dumped them in a totally new environment yesterday. I mean, that's quite stressful for them, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we just wanted to see where they are. Are they... Um, what group sizes are they? But it will also it will all change over time. They don't have a herd mentality, do they? No, definitely not. I mean, very little is known about giraffe. And there, it's just in the recent years that there have been some studies um, on giraffe and their social networks. We don't really know much, and um, most literature suggests that they have a fission fusion, which means they come together and they split up. Uh, what we see a lot now in the Warnip, where we have our um, Warnip and Horosip River, where we have our long-term research, that we tend to see certain females together, um, but then others join them and split up again. So there is no hard and fast, and they definitely don't have the strong family bonds as we see with, with lion or, or elephant. Um, so there's a, there's a high probability that the next time we find the, the giraffe we saw just now with the sat unit, that um, she could be with different giraffe or more giraffe um, in the group. She, um, she could, but they could also still be in the same group. You just really don't know. Yeah. Um, also, as you alluded to before, when we caught them yesterday, they came out of three different groups. Um, so you, we, we don't know were they related, were they just mates, um, were the groups related. We, yeah. we just really don't know much about it. And um, yeah, it's definitely something we need to learn more about. To um, it's something in the back of our minds um, when we do translocations. Do we actually pull families apart? Um, but at the moment, we just don't have enough evidence to say it's it, it could be negative. All our conservation actions are based on the latest science we have. Um, maybe in some cases we look back in a few years and say, hmm, wasn't the best decision, but we still believe it's much more important to actually take decisions and actions now rather than just research and research and say, we'll wait, we'll wait. And once we know everything, then, then we do, do something. something. That could just really be for, too late for giraffe. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's something that's, that's really threatening across Africa. I mean, you guys have been doing amazing work across the continent and then, you know, giraffe populations are threatened all over. Exactly. Um, I mean, most people are really just don't know. So even when we talk to to conservationists who work in different fields, um, most people are really surprised when we tell them there's only about 111,000 giraffe yeah. left in Africa. And just to put that into perspective, that means there is uh, one giraffe for every four elephant. Yeah. I mean, we worry about elephant and, and rightly so. They are absolutely in trouble. but giraffe actually are in trouble too and maybe a little bit worse off at the moment um, so it's really important to start doing something and by moving giraffe here we just really have extended their range we're bringing them back into areas where they historically occurred and that just gives them the opportunity for numbers to rise even yeah. more and um, so obviously there'll be something that we we're going to be de developing with GCF and we'll be partnering with Doranaus Conservancy and their game guards 
where we're going to sort of develop an ID book on the giraffe in this area. And then when the ultimate guides are out in this area, they'll, you know, with their guests sort of work through the ID book and it'll give you guys a bit more information out here, sort of a third eye in this area. Yeah, which is it's really great because, I mean, as uh, you will know, but lots of people don't know, um, each giraffe looks different. So their, their coat pattern is individual, just like a human fingerprint. So by taking photos of the left and the right side, we can individually identify giraffes. So when they ran off the truck yesterday, we took photos of all of them on both sides, left and right. So we will compile that for a ID book that uh, is just something nice then for your guides also to have in the car when they drive around because guests actually really enjoy it. Yeah. If they can look and you can look at the pattern and everyone sees <laughs> and something work it else. out. And exactly. <laughs> you see a little flower or a heart or something. Yeah. Um, and you can actually ID the giraffe or if there's not enough time or, or guests lose interest, you just quickly take some photos and then we can look at it. And there's also um, programs that help identification. So we can then just chuck it in the computer, run, th run it through the algorithm and uh, can quickly see which giraffe we see regularly and also which giraffe we see together. Even going forward, the, the monitoring and, and the constant conservation of giraffe in this area, it's, it's, it's all about partnerships. I mean, it's always good to see, you know, you know groups as your, as such as yourself to be very positive and forward thinking in, in conservation of a species, but also an area. Yeah, I mean, partnerships are really at the core of our organization. We, we don't want or can do everything ourselves and we really have no intentions. We really love it when we can be like the trigger who starts talking to partners and get some ideas and, and then we just push it and, and yeah, get it started. Like like here, it was a discussion we had some years ago to say, wouldn't it be great to bring giraffe yeah. back here? And then now it all happened. And uh, the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism was involved, uh, the local communities. Um, we had a great donor in America who paid for it all, which is also obviously really Absolutely important. amazing. Um, so, yeah, the Trail family um, and Ivan Carter, who brought us together. So it, it takes a lot of people to, to make something like this happen. And then we have this amazing game capture team from yeah. Dupree Wild, which is just so amazing to see them in action. Um, yeah, and then the giraffe are here, and now we, we have to take <laughs> it further. But we, we really like it to hopefully also now create some excitement with the local communities that they develop a pride. And they, yeah. I mean, yesterday the... Um, Kherson, the, the head of the of the conservancy, was there and he brought his wife and some other guys and everyone was really happy to see the giraffe and yeah. we hope this stays the way and that they have positive thoughts and, and are proud of, of their animals and look after them. Oh, very important because we are belongs from the profit income from the conservancy and all the things is very important for us because our benefits is coming from, from that. There were a lot of the giraffes in our area, but due to the continuous drought, we lost most of the giraffes in our area. So they were close to the farming areas, but now some of them is far away from the farming areas because drinking water for them was only available at the, at the communal farms. Now, at this stage, we receive, receive again from government, if I am not uh, uh, wrong, giraffes. In total, 14 giraffes, which, we are, uh, which make us very proud again, because we nearly lost our giraffes, but with this help, we'll increase now our numbers for tourism attraction, because uh, people in overseas want to see always these giraffes. And giraffes is very attractive to the uh, uh, tourists. So we are very proud of if to receive the giraffes from the government. And we appreciate it very, very much. Our people will also benefit from them. When the giraffes, <coughs> uh, now when the total of the giraffes increase, they will roaming in all the areas where the communal farms are. And 
these giraffes will attract again the tourists to our people, where they, where they are making the business with craft and so on. And that's why my community is also uh, appreciate these giraffes.